Uh, today we are doing a survey for the paged spring snail. That involves a time count, so we can estimate a catch per unit effort, or relative abundance, as well as doing a habitat assessment, uh, to determining you know, what are its critical components as far as the habitat, and then also to look at instantaneous or uh, observable threats. The paged spring snail is one of our smallest wildlife species in the state. Uh, it's not much larger than the size of a sesame seed, so about two to three millimeters in size. Spring snails are a good indicator of clean water quality and uh, suitable habitat for a lot of other macroinvertebrates um, or you know, these type of spring environments. Um, they were found here in the uh, Camp Verde Page Springs area uh, probably in the 1980s. And so they're fairly recent as far as what we you know, have been able to document. Um, this species occurs on 10 sites within hatchery grounds, uh, plus two other locations off-site on other private property. It's protected under a conservation agreement. The conservation agreement is an entirely voluntary, um, non-federal agreement that we work with Fish and Wildlife Service and landowners, in this case, uh, commissioned properties here in the hatchery. And so we are able to manage and monitor those species uh, to their benefit without having any type of federal restrictions on the Endangered Species Act. Page spring snail does not have any federal uh, status under the Endangered Species Act, but it is identified in Arizona as a species of greatest conservation need. And that is part of the uh, Game and Fish Department's process and effort to identify species for management priority around the state. They tend to be those that are rare or at risk or potentially could become a rare at risk into the future. So spring snails on a whole are pretty rare in the state. Some of the primary threats to spring snails are the loss of groundwater. Uh, and that actually is a larger problem for a lot of fish and wildlife in the area. But uh, the page spring snail doesn't require a lot of water. Um, other major threats include invasive species, such as the New Zealand mud snail. Another threat is the invasive Himalayan blackberry. It can encroach upon the spring habitat and shade out the uh, area that the spring snails are found in. And that uh, will reduce the amount of food that is available to the spring snails. We've been very lucky in the last 20 years in reversing the trends of, with the page spring snail. We're able to maintain all of our extant populations, populations that were here at the time that we took ownership of this hatchery. Uh, we've been able to increase their numbers and abundance within the populations by doing some habitat modifications. Bass House is one of our success stories. Uh, that was an extirpated site uh, more than 50 years ago that had a wooden shed over the spring head. We were able to replace that wooden shed with a chain link enclosure, so that allows more sunlight into the uh, spring. Um, and then after replacing the pipe uh, leading from the weir box, which still had a remnant population of the snails, uh, the snails were able to recolonize the spring head by coming back through the pipe and then occupying that habitat within the spring itself. And over the years, we've been able to watch as that population grew from dozens to hundreds to thousands. And now it's at a very good state. We're hoping to re replicate the success of Bass House at other extirpated sites by reducing threats and then being able to reintroduce the snails. Arizona is unique. It has a wide diversity of species uh, for mollusk, uh, about 200 native mollusk. And that does include spring snails, uh, a lot of land snails. We don't know a lot of information about a lot of those species, uh, just there hasn't been enough work done on those. But we're hoping to change that uh, by getting more survey work done, more monitoring of you know, populations that we've detected, and working with landowners, uh, land managers, to uh, manage those species uh, appropriately under a, a voluntary state um, conservation agreements, and state conservation plans. But in the meantime, we're still actively monitoring and managing the species. So nothing really has changed uh, in that regards. We're still holding true to our conservation commitments.